Well, good evening and welcome to this reflection for Monday Thursday. Let's just spend a few minutes thinking about the meal that Jesus had with his friends. But before we do that, let's pray. Father, we thank you that in this moment we can remember all that you have done. As we explore your word this evening, may you speak again to our hearts and minds and may we understand once more all that you have for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The reading is Luke 22, verses 13 to 20. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Everything was ready. Jesus had eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with his friends. Everything was gathered and laid up. And yet the backdrop was one of conflict. The backdrop was one of uncertainty. The backdrop was one of conflict of two kingdoms, of good and of evil. The reality was in this meal, there was one at the table who was going to deny and one at the table who was going to betray. And yet in this meal, Jesus wanted the disciples to understand, to understand all that was going to happen to him and how the new kingdom could be ushered in, in and through Jesus and how he was the fulfillment of this Passover meal. So let's have a little look a little bit closer at this passage from Luke. Have you ever wondered, ever wondered why when we take communion, we often have the bread and then the wine? And yet in this passage in Luke, it's really clear. There's a cup that comes first, the cup that comes first here. You see, in the Passover meal, there were four cups and each of the cups represented something. They represented these four phrases. I will bring out, I will deliver, I will redeem and I will take. For those of you that aren't aware, these verses come from Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 to 8, which I'll just read for you now. Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. You see, the first cup that Jesus has here in Luke is one of the first two. It's one of the two that is, I will bring out, I will deliver. Jesus is saying to his disciples, in the events that are to come, I will bring you out from the dominion of darkness. I will deliver you from all your sins. I will set you free. Here, Jesus wants the disciples to understand that the fulfilment of both the Israelites coming out of Egypt and us coming out from sin to actually freedom again with God is going to be fulfilled in this Passover meal. But how is that going to happen? Well, it's at this point that Jesus then reaches for the bread.
So how was Jesus going to explain this fully to them? Well, he took bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke it. I wonder in those moments what memories came back to the disciples. They must have broken bread together so often. It was so recognisable to them. You see, even after the resurrection, the disciples recognised Jesus on the road to Emmaus when? When Jesus broke bread. I wonder, though, if at this point they had so many memories. Maybe the feeding of the 5,000 and literally before their eyes they saw the bread multiplied. Or the feeding of the 4,000. I wonder what memories were there for them, just as the normal meals, the times they asked Jesus the questions, the times that he explained, or the times that he asked them questions back and took them deeper. Well, in this moment, Jesus did what he did a number of times, but he filled it with brand new meaning. He took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in memory of me. Jesus was reminding them in an action as well as in words, that for the salvation story to come to pass, his body was going to be broken, was going to be broken in the next few days on the cross. And it's through this bread that we remember and are reminded of that story of Easter. In the way that here the bread was given and Jesus said, this is my body given for you. The disciples would have at the time just remembered how the lamb was given at Passover. The lamb being the reminder of how the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. And here in the body, in the bread, this is going to be the reminder of how we are delivered. Jesus in our place, delivered from our sins, set free to know God again. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and the cup of the new covenant, as it says here. You see, this was the third cup, the third cup being I will redeem. I will pay the price for you. Think of the stories of Ruth and Boaz, the redemption price. In Jewish culture, often at the time, there would have been negotiation around a bride price for a bride being married to their husband. And they would often seal a deal by actually taking a cup of wine, making a covenant between them. You see, Jesus, in referring to the kingdom, almost invites us to be his church, to be his bride, to make a covenant with us. As Jesus offers us that cup, his blood, He's offering that new covenant. He's in effect saying, will you, will you marry me? Will you say yes to me? Will you be mine and be with me forever? The imagery is there. The offer is there. And each and every time we therefore drink the cup, the cup after the bread, it's the third cup, the one I will redeem. And is accepting once again that what Jesus did for us, how Jesus paid the price for us, how Jesus made the new covenant for us, we are saying, whether we fully understand it or not, we are saying yes to Jesus, yes to his new covenant, yes to his new way of life. Thank you, Jesus. I will live in your new covenant. So what actually happened at the end of the meal? Well, we see here in verse 39, let's just read it now. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. In this part of the story, 
we see again that despite having had the meal with his friends, he went out as he usually did, and he went out to pray. And in that moment of praying, he was reflecting on the cup, the cup of suffering that he was about to drink. And he wrestled, and he reflected, and he thought, and he prayed, and he prayed again and again and again. He, like you and me, knew pain, and knew what was coming. And in this moment, he wrestled with God in prayer. And yet in this moment, as he wrestled with God in prayer, what happened? An angel came to him. You know, a bit like when Jacob wrestled with the angel and God blessed him. Here, Jesus wrestled with taking the cup of suffering that was about to come. And yet he chose, he chose to do the Father's will. And as he chose to do the Father's will, he was strengthened and strengthened by that angel. For you and me, sometimes we spend times of uncertainty. Sometimes we spend times unsure and we get to wrestle. We get to wrestle with our own thoughts, our own worries and our own fears. The reality is that God is in charge, that God is with us. And when we choose to accept and to go with Jesus, just as he was promising in the meal earlier, God will always come to us and will strengthen us and will restore us. He gives us the strength for the journey that we might know all that is to come. So as we reflect this Monday, Thursday, let us remember all that Jesus has promised. Let us remember how he's invited us to be with him. Let us remember, even when we're wrestling in prayer, when we're thinking and reflecting, that Jesus himself comes to us and strengthens us. And so let's pray this Monday, Thursday. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you know us and that you love us. We thank you that in bread and wine, you remind us of all that you were about to do, and then you remind us of all that you have done. As we reflect on this Easter story, may you once again come to us, may you strengthen us, and help us to understand all that you have done for us, particularly where you said, not my will, but yours to the fathers. Why? Because you loved each one of us. As we journey through Good Friday and then on into Easter Sunday, may that love become more real in our hearts and minds and lives. And may your peace begin to reign. In your name. Amen.